Is it hard to access affordable, healthy food? Then listen carefully. Daryl Addison, an African-American inventor, has patented a process for growing food on demand. He called it Torpedo Pot. Torpedo Pot is a fully automated flower pot that gives you control over your plant's environment. All you do is add soil, seeds, and plants to the flower pot and watch it grow. Yes, Torpedo Pot grows the rest. Visit www.torpedopot.com. All right, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, thank you, thank you, thank you for joining us on the stream. We'll go ahead and give you a hand clap for that. Uh, today is Wednesday, um, and we we're here on the stream last night. Um, I did not stream, and I did not stream last night. I just was a little bit, you know, uh, under the weather, a little bit fighting not to make sure I got no cold or anything, right? So usually when I feel like that, I'd go ahead and take, take a little break, you know, take a little medicine. I remember my mom used to say, boy, get in there and take some medication because I can't afford to, to take you to no hospital. I don't have that kind of money. So uh, go in there and start taking medication. Don't let nothing catch up on you. It gets worse, right? So, you know, shout out to mom. So while I'm going on and share this uh, stream out, give me a second by that. Um, I want to make a quick response before we really get started to a comment I saw earlier that was in the stream. And uh, let's give me a second, hold on, just make sure I share this. You know, I like to respond to comments. It won't take too long, right? While we let people get in. Um, this person that left a comment, Wes Sun. Um, I'll read it verbatim, ladies and gentlemen, because I like to respond at times. Um, the channel is going downhill fast. It's not what the analytics say. And it's not even what the view. Listen, if I was doing these particular streams and people wasn't engaging, people wasn't even agreeing with what I'm saying or it's maybe not happening, then they would not, they would have told me and I'm like, okay, well, shoot, that's not nothing I need to do. Um, they said, why are we focusing on those immigrants? They have no power. It's not about power. Um, it's about confusion. The confusion is actually with us, not with them. The, so we got to straighten out the confusion with us. They're not, actually not the issue. And the video we're going to show tonight is going to really put it right where we can understand it, how I'm not going to speak on people from the Caribbean. And let me go back to that. I had a particular, I think it was a sister that actually messaged me from the Caribbean. Uh, she was a Caribbean sister. Distant cousin. Uh, the family say they you know they're embarrassed by Candace Owens. Not everybody from Caribbean accolade. I never said everybody from Caribbean was that way. There's a lot of down Caribbean people I know. That's a, that's about the, the people. It's about you know trying to make something right. They want to unify it throughout the diaspora, and I'm down with those Caribbean people 100. percent So like I'm down with the people from the continent 100. percent I've always said that people on the continent is more more. Uh, thinking about unification. Um, people on, on a continent think more about working together than those who come here. And I explained to a lot of times that those who come here a lot of times are selected by the U.S. government. So, so they already don't, don't, don't pass the smell test. Then we cover one particular distant cousin from Namibia trying to get a visa to come here. They just taking her money will let her come. Well, maybe some men they say, nah, she may join with them black Americans. I'm not her. We're going to get the one over here. We know it's going to shuck and jive. You know what I'm saying? I'm saying, so yes, we're going to have these conversations. If you don't like that, well then go have the conversations on your channel uh, where you think you need to have that at. And you can say whatever you think you need to say and God bless you in the midst of your conversation. But we're going to have these conversations. We're going to have it because that's what we need to do. Also, ladies and gentlemen, make sure to download the African Diaspora News Channel app in the Google Play and Apple App Store. Now, tonight, um, we're going to shut down the stream here on YouTube uh, a little earlier because we want to continue the live stream just a little bit after that uh, to review a particular video that I cannot review here on YouTube. So make sure you download the African Diaspora News Channel app in the Google Play Apple App Store. Make sure that you try to select a video 
click create account. And then from there you can choose whatever you would like. All right. So without further ado, let's get back, um, to what we have to say before the, uh, Oh, also if you have, if you, uh, follow us on Patreon, I posted a video today about that. Um, you can go view it. I explain why, you know, about the Patreon page. We need everybody that's on the Patreon page to, um, go over to the app. Once you're on the app, get your membership on the app, remove yourself from Patreon. When that gets to, when those members get to zero, we'll be shutting down the Patreon page. Um, we don't need a Patreon when we have an app of our own. I explained to you about that. So if you're on the Patreon, I left that video for you. Please follow that instruction. And then once we see it go to zero, that'll be done. All right. So without further ado, let's get to our devotion. Now our devotion is always with the, uh, mayor of America, the super mayor. Um, every time I watch her is always some new clip that I can add and I will continue to add clips to our devotional since I know that's, that's your favorite mayor. Um, so let's go ahead and click our devotional for the day and then we'll get into what we need to get into. Y'all forget I am the leader. They want to hear from the mayor. If y'all ain't learned that yet, the mayor, not the trustees that don't do nothing, that only run their mouth. Y'all don't do no work, no work. Mm. What, what is that? No comment. Y'all should be ashamed of y'all stuff. Y'all black. Y'all are black. And y'all sitting up here beating and attacking on a black woman that's in power. Y'all should be ashamed of yourselves. So this is what it's all about, guys. They don't want a black person in power. They don't want a woman in power. You don't even been seeing that yet. And someone so young. Everybody gotta understand, God give you what you can have it. That's what God give you. He ain't gonna give you more than that. As long as you can stay, stay the course, fight the fight, and keep going, that's what we gonna do here at Thornton Township. And we've been doing a doggone good job. Clark, what are you doing? You out of order. You out of order. Did I call the road? Did I say call the road? I'm still speaking. You're out of order, Clerk Key. You out of order, Clerk Key. Like, stop. Y'all out of order. Everybody want to run stuff. Y'all don't run this house over here. Stop, please. All right, ladies and gentlemen, give, give, we give a hand clap to the super mayor, Tiffany Henyard. Uh, shout out to her. I'm pretty sure there's going to be some more clips of her that we can add to our uh, daily devotional and we will continue to add to the daily devotional, um, until the super mayor, you know, either get voted out or she get led out of there one way or another. Um, now the, let's get to now for a long time, our people viewed, we wanted our distant cousins to come over because we are thinking, Hey, if we get more black people here in our mind. Remember we are thinking black people look like us, right? If we get more people that look like us, that's dealt with colonization, dealt with slavery, right? Dealt with discrimination, all kinds of things. If we get them here, it can help them. And also we can have more people in the fight. And we never understood what happened. Now, a lot of the Caribbean people that was originally here, they was in the fight. They was in the fight with us. A lot of them were. So I can't say, they wasn't, we gotta be real. But Shirley Chisholm, she said that the white supremacists wanted a more docile black person because we were too turned up. We was too ready to fight. So that's what they, their plan was. And, and they started with, even she talked about her parents, right? Which were of Caribbean. And they made sure when they came here to give them help that they wasn't giving the black Americans. They made sure to help them with businesses, homes, the kind of the same thing they do with the migrants today. Shirley Chisholm has said that they, that's what happened even with people in her family by the U S government. So while the black Americans wasn't getting that, they were bringing other black folks in, let's say from the Caribbean and now the African continent. Now they have perfected who they bring over here. And this is why we having these issues and problems, right? But let's listen to in this in this particular woman from the continent. She she you know what she's gonna say. I highly appreciate, and I, I'm glad she said this because I'm not the issue isn't her or what she's going to say. The issue is us completely us, and we got to have those hard conversations. So let's go ahead and cue this up 
real quick. Give me a second. As an African living in the United States, I used to share the same sentiment that Africans share about African Americans because I had a hard time when I first moved here. People used to always tell me, you're not black enough, you're an Oreo, you're secretly white on the inside, as if I wasn't literally from Africa. But I now understand after living here for eight years that black in the United States is a very specific criteria and anything outside of that just doesn't fit. But I wanna help African Americans understand that Africans coming to the United States are immigrants first and foremost. Then they are Nigerian or Senegalese or whatever country they're from. And then at some point they are black. But Africans don't put black high up on their identity well as much as African Americans do. And that is for legitimate reasons on both ends. And so when an African is coming to the United States, they're thinking to themselves, okay, I'm an immigrant here. I have to do my best for myself and my family back home. The sacrifices that took for me to get here were no light work, okay? So I need to really like ally myself with what's going to make me successful in this country. And because it's the United States, it's the dominant culture, which is white American culture. And so Africans are gonna instinctively ally themselves with the culture that's gonna give them the most success. I mean, African Americans even admit that they have to code switch to be successful here because that's what brings success. And so Africans are like, all right, we'll do that. And it also doesn't help that for a long time, Africans are fed a very negative view of black American culture and that's its own propaganda. But because Africans are so conservative and they're coming to a country where black Americans have been labeled as the antithesis to this conservative traditional family values, they have, if anything, more in common with like Southern Baptist white racist people. But that aside, going back to identity markers, black Americans put black first and foremost, and then everything else goes below it. And so they're thinking when an, another black people come to our country, they're going to want to integrate with us, the other black people, because duh, black comes first. And they get quickly disappointed in realizing that for Africans, black and the identity and that coming is not first. Their immigrant identity comes first and then their country and if anything for us as Africans to feel like that's my brother, that's my brethren or whatever, you have to come from the same tribe as us because we have so many black people around, we don't automatically pre-select for black, but black Americans don't have so many black people around, have had to defend and protect their culture among, amidst a dominant white culture. And so they are already pre-select and are overprotective for black. And so that's why I think at the core of it, there's like a deep misunderstanding because of not realizing that we put, I, like where we put our identity markers and what we put first and what we prioritize are so different culturally because of our, our differences in trauma realistically and so it does make sense that black americans will be like oh my people my you know my brethren come here and african americans or africans sorry coming to the united states are like i'm just trying to make it here like you know it's a lot of work to immigrate to the united states and so y'all can stay over there and i can see why it's hurtful and i can see why it's taken personally and i can see the deep misunderstanding and the betrayal that African Americans feel. But it's unfortunate and that's just a reality. But if we can talk about it from this perspective, I think we can get to a better understanding. Um, but I also believe that Africans that spend enough time in the United States get to this compassion and understanding of the Black American community because it is a very unique and specific set of circumstances for a culture to grow and to develop. All right, ladies and gentlemen, that, that video was, when I first saw that, I was like, wow, that is very interesting, that explanation. So, but it also makes sense. And now let's get back to us in a minute, right? So she said that we see them and see another black person and we thinking, oh man, they, they like us, right? Because their mindset of coming here is not like our mindset of being from this country, building this country from scratch, going through everything we can in this country. They looking at any immigrant that come here, no matter where they come from, they look at this country like a lick. 
They look at this country as I'm coming here to make money. I'm coming here to send money back to my family and whatever country I come from. I'm not here to stand against racism, white supremacy. I'm not here to assist black people of anything. Matter of fact, black people are my problem now. Listen to what she said. We would rather join with the folks because they are the quote unquote dominant culture in their mind. And we rather join with them, not join with the people that can actually give them the layout of the land, the people that could teach them about the people they really about to deal with. No, you rather join. So don't you, now you kind of understand why some, I didn't say all, don't write me. Now you understand why some move the way they move. Now you get why they can't be black first. They can't look out for the community because they don't look at us as part of their particular community. We didn't know this for a long time. Let's call it what it is. We didn't know this. Now, before some of you write me, she doesn't represent every African immigrant. I didn't say she did. But based on what she said, the actions make sense though. Like why we say, hey, you know, y'all look like us. Come on and join. It makes sense why you separate yourself in your communities. It makes sense, don't it? Because you don't see yourself as black. You don't see yourself as one of us. That's why when you get here, you'd rather go join with the folks. You'd rather separate yourself from black America. And that's fine. I, I, listen, if you think that's what you got to do, do what you got to do. This is my problem. This is my big problem though. You come over here and you're trying to get the bag and I ain't got a problem with you getting it. I really don't do you. But my problem is when something's for black people, here you come. That's my problem. I'll give you an example. If there's a Juneteenth scholarship, remember, you don't identify as black. Remember, you're immigrant first, your nationality, wherever you come from, right? Whatever ethnicity may be after that, then way at the bottom is black. You say that in your, in a lot of, some people, not all, think that black is bad. You say negative stereotypes. If you are a person of African descent, it's a negative stereotype about you, period. Show me the, the stereotype that's been put out there great for people of, the, uh, of any kind of black or African descent. There's no, no good ones, right? You sit up here, you give an excuse that you was fed all this stereotype, but yeah, you, you wasn't fed a stereotype by the folks. Now this, this is the crazy part. And I'm still trying to understand this. It's not just what she's saying. It's the East Indian. It's the Asian. It's Latin America. Everybody this, that these people have colonized. The, it's crazy to me. I, I'm like, I'm still, I say, do these people have a demonic spell on these people? I'm trying, I really believe it's demonic, some demonic spell because it ain't no way you could harm my family and I, and, 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 and I, I cut for you more and I, and I, and I want to be around you, but the people that never harm my family, that's the people I got to smoke for. That doesn't make sense. How is it? I'm going to be mad at the people that never colonized me, never stole my resources, never committed mass, you know, atrocities. Never did anything like that. Anything. The people that did it and their descendants, you love, and the people that didn't do it, you, you hate. And, and nobody that thinking logically and any kind of common sense will say that's normal. Most people say it'd be the other way around. But it don't matter where these people come from, they're running from their homeland up here, right, to America. They come in here and they, and they reverence the people that got their homeland looking like that. Not a single black American has done a thing to nobody in the earth. We haven't harmed nobody in a systemic way. We didn't steal resources. We, not, we didn't topple your leaders. We, we don't have no CIA that sent jackals in there to take out your leaders. We, we, we didn't corrupt your leaders and paying them off. Black Americans did that to nobody. Every time you have a good leader in Latin America, something happens to them. We didn't do it. The African continent, you can't have a good leader 
they take them out or putting sanctions on you. Black Americans never did that. So it's, it's right. It's really offensive. I'm going to say it's not so much disappointing at this point. The disappointment is gone. It's the offensive part. Now you wonder why some black Americans are getting really tired of that is because we, uh, uh, come on now. We live in an age of knowledge. You can, you can go on any AI program now and ask about the history of your nation. And even AI I tell you that now, so it's no excuse to talk about no black stereotype no more. I don't want to hear it. That's being lazy. And, and, and you think we stupid at this point. You can find out about the history of your nation and with it between five minutes, even a simple Google search will show you what people have done things in your nation, where you come from, what they doing to your nation. Now look at in West Africa, all the stuff that France did. We didn't do that. But yet you immigrate over here and got a problem with us. Like, like we was the cause or, or what? Come on y'all. It, do, it doesn't make sense. No, y'all so dead. Y'all. So this is the thing. Now you're talking about selling out. A lot of y'all have sold out. You sold out your people back home. You come, you want to come over here, leave your homeland, not try to build that up and come over here and try to join with the people that got your homeland a mess. Cause they the reason your homeland a mess. They the reason why you talking about the leaders of government, they control your government. And if your government try to even help you, they going to get them in line. And if they don't, if they don't get in line, they will get them out. Your best friend in the planet earth is black America, your best friend. But it makes, but it kind of makes perfect sense in a way you say, well, why they never, well, what, what country never say, Hey, come on back. And I mean, really meant it. Hey, we'll give you a citizenship, but that's nothing but paperwork, right? Well, if you look at it, most of your governments are controlled by the Western powers Two, you look at us as an opposing tribe that's trying to come in three, the jealousy that happens, but this is the killing part. Cause I seen it. The folks show up in droves to, to your locations. They show up in droves and they buying property. They doing all kinds of things and actually discriminated against a lot of you in Latin, Latin America. Let's start there. Mexico. There's an issue right now in Mexico in, uh, Matatlan, I think that's how you say it, Mexico. Well, the folks from over here has been going over there because the folks don't know how to get along with nobody. They want to start oppressing people. That's just what, that's how they move. They can't just get along with people. So in that city, they play a style of music called Banda, right? That's what they do. That's their country. That's what they do. They start complaining about the music. They don't want to hear the music. The music's too loud. They don't want to hear that in somebody else's country. Then they complain in Mexico about the food is too spicy. And what those folks end up doing is in Mexico is tries to start changing their food, messing their food up to not make it spicy. And then, you know, they complaining so much that some of these resorts have banned the, the, the people from playing the music. It went all the way up to the president of Mexico. He ended up sending the Mexican military out there to try to shut it down. But the Mexican military just started singing and playing with them. Say, look, it's, a, it's our country. It's our people. And then at the same time, my wife informed me that that kind of music Banda is the music that uh, sings a lot of praises to the cartels. And so she was like, yeah, you probably want to leave them alone because eventually you're going to piss the cartel off and you know how that goes when the cartel get upset, right? But they can't just go somewhere and get along with people. My, and then the question I had is even with that situation, why can't you vacation in Europe? What's wrong with Europe? I, I'm trying to figure that out. Europe has a lot of nice countries. Some countries don't even have none of the, no people that have no kind of melanin to them. They, you know what I'm saying? They're coming they, even in the African continent, they will accommodate. They will accommodate them, change everything around. Let me tell you something. Even when I was in Costa Rica, I was so upset. 
I stayed at the W in Guancaste and I want to hear Costa Rican music. I don't want to hear no freaking American music. If I'm in Costa Rica, you had these two folks sitting up here singing Californication. I don't want to hear that, that mess. Like y'all have came and just messed this hotel up too. They cannot go nowhere without colonizing or attempting to. And you other countries let them do a shame on you. You should tell them this is our country. Oh, and also they was complaining about they speaking too much Spanish. Um, you're in freaking Mexico. Why wouldn't they speak Spanish? Carry your happy self to Europe so they speak English, sir or ma'am. Anyway, so this, what this woman was saying in the video, and shout out to her. It makes sense. When they get in political position, why they don't look at us the same? They don't look at it as black, but see the problem that I, and I'm go back to this. They like to use black to elevate themselves, but they, but they really don't want to join with black. They'll go to an HBCU, but I ain't, I ain't one of y'all. You understand? I'll get the scholarship for black. I'll do this black girl magic, everything black, but I'm really not one of y'all. I don't see myself as y'all, but I'm going to use y'all. I'm going to use all your, what you fought for to get this. I'm going to walk on your back, take what I didn't fight for. And then say, I, you're not my people. And then when we talk about that here in America, then some of them get mad. So you guys are being divisive. You guys are being xenophobic. Uh, 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 remember the video. She said to our disappointment, they don't, they don't see us as all one people. They don't prime example. Cause I have these conversations on camera and behind the scenes, because like I said, I work with Africans every day. So because I work with Africans every day, I have certain conversations about it. So the term foreigner, let's talk about that term. Even on the continent, they look at other black people from other countries as foreigner. Now in our mind, how are you going to call a black person a freaking foreigner in an African continent? If you can't go nowhere, you know what I'm saying? You can't go anywhere, but they look at each other as different. Now I say a foreigner in the continent would be someone outside of African descent. That's a foreigner to me, but someone of, come on now. And then if you're talking about borders or fighting for borders, in the African continent, well, remember who set up the borders, the folks set up the borders in the Berlin conference, those borders wasn't there prior to the folks going to the Berlin conference and say, I'm taking this land, that land, this land, this land, this is yours. This is the border and whatever. So if a person like Julius Malema is saying, forget these borders, we don't need no borders. That's actually returning back to pre-colonial African continent. When he mentioned that, you know what I'm saying? But this mindset and what she's saying and this mindset, at least we talking about within the people that come here, you know, from the diaspora is it, it, good. It's good. Then they get mad. when we talk about blackness. We have a right. Once again, we have a God given right to say what's black or not because we identify ourselves as black. Our history, we say black history, black excellence. Everything with us is black. That's not how they identify. Remember, black is a dirty word. Where they learn that from? They learn it from the folks that black is a dirty word. And when we start pointing out, wait a minute, hold on. You don't identify as black. Now, not all of them do that. Let me make sure to say not all, because it's not all. You do have some people that, that come, usually maybe like, first, second generation say, wait a minute, I've been in this country long enough. Matter of fact, they don't even look at me as Nigerian. They call me a black American. Yeah, I got Nigerian parents, but I'm a black American now. I mean, shoot, I, I really don't relate to them other than what my parents, they treat me different when I go over there. Plenty of them have said that first and second generation, they're not treated the same. They're called a kata too, even though they got Nigerian parents or, or Senegalese parents. So it, it happens. And I know this first and second generation, a lot of times will get it, but the ones that just first come over that's been vetted by the U S embassy, 
that's, that's, that's an issue and a problem. So let's go back to what the problem is with us now, since we understand that, how should we move? What should be the test to vet them? Like, okay, you can't get in a political position until we vet you. See, we have to start learning how to vet people. We got to learn. We got to start asking certain questions to vet them to make sure, because you got to think about it. We don't want no one to represent us in a, in, a, in a political arena unless they identify and view black as first. Like, like, the, like the, the woman said, we identify black first and everything go below it. She said that they don't do that. So how can we have any political representation that don't uh, identify black first? Uh, uh, we got to deal with our black children, community, black empowerment. Everything has to be with us is, is with our community, right? We cannot vote for people that don't have that mindset. And that falls on us as black Americans at that point. It's our problem now. Because now, like I said earlier about the internet and the AI and all of that is on us too now. You complain about it, the Congressional Black Caucus, but you start running down some of them. And yes, some of them are, are, are black American. Some of them are, you may say FBA, some of them are. If you identify as Democrat first, then you should not get no votes. If you don't, if you identify as Caribbean or some sort of immigrant first, no, it's on us to, st to stop voting for people that don't identify with the community. Isn't by fighting for it. Isn't by the, and this is what I'm tell you about Congress. Congress, they have a, a district, right? A congressional district. If your district is mostly black Americans, you don't have to do a everybody, a all lives matter conversation. Let's say if you stay in a district that's 80 plus percent black American, you don't have to all lives matter your conversation. Now, if you live in, if you are going to be a representative in a district and it's kind of mixed of everybody, then you're going to kind of have to all lives matter a little bit, but doesn't mean that you exclude black people in the midst of your all lives matter conversation. Because if it's all lives matter, that means black is part of all. You understand? So that doesn't give you an excuse to say, well, I'm only going to prioritize the folks, Asians and Latinos, and not talk about black people. Because that's what the Democrats do. The Democrats do all lives matter except black America. Black America is only important at the time to vote. That's when black America is important to the Democrat Party. And... Once again, we have a big problem in our community because so many of y'all are so attached to these people, you would think they put a demonic spell on you too, the way you act about them. And then you're so intellectually lazy when somebody bring up the Democrats and what they haven't done for black people, you're so lazy that the, your first response is what the Republicans are doing. You won't deal because you have no comeback on what that person is saying and dealing with the Democrats. And, and, and I always tell people, don't waste your time talking to people that are just going to respond what the Republicans are going to do. No, we're talking about the people that we've been voting for for the past 60 years, and it has not been Republicans. So, so that's, that's just an intellectual, lazy response because you, you know good and well what that person saying is right. You know they're right because if they're wrong, you'll know you'll counter real quick with an answer. But since you don't have an answer, well, what the Republicans, that, that's all they're going to say. But now since the information's out, now since we are being told what the thought process was, and even she said in the end that she thought that way, but now she understands a little different now. So she's been here for eight years. So that's why I'm not speaking down on her. Once again, I'm thanking her. I'm thanking her for education. I'm thanking her for saying thank you for educating us on the thought processes so we know how to move. And then this is the thing. Have you noticed ever since we kind of say, hey, we're going to just kind of get with the community and let's focus on things that we need, like reparations, X, Y, Z. You notice that we're not allowing the, the folks in the media to dump anybody that, just, that has black skin on us. We're starting to look at, wait, 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 who is that person? And where are they, where are they from? 
let's call it what it is, the where they from thing, that's common in black America. We always ask people where they from. I go somewhere different. I've been asked several times, hey, where you from? Where you people from? That's constant has been asked. What's your family name? Well, where, where they come, where they, where they come from? What's, what state they come from? What city they come from? We've always done that in black America, especially if like you, you got a daughter, she bringing her guy over for the first time. So you meeting him, you, you know, you say, Hey, young, young man, what's, where were your people from? Oh, um, well, my people originally, they from Opelousas, Louisiana. Oh, okay. Opelousas. Okay. And then, then they're like, what, what's, what, what's your last name? And they say, 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 oh, Jones. They say, what, what's, what's your grandparents' last name? You know, it could be something like Thibodeau or something like that. Say, the, Thib the Thibodeaux, did they, did they grow up around, you know, this particular section of town or whatever? They just start trying to figure out who they are. And then they're like, yeah, I heard that. And then we're like, hold on, you remember them Thibodeaux over there? You say around the corner, like, you know, some of them play sports, some of them, you know, whatever, like they, they'll start talking about your family, if they, especially if they know them, right? And that could be a good thing for you. Like, oh man, you come from a good family. Oh man, come on. Or if you come from a bad family and they know you come from a bad family, their face is going to change. They, oh, you come from them people? Oh, okay. All right. And then, and then they say, hey, well, well just let's go. You know, when they done, go in the car and say, I'm going to talk to her real quick and say, look, I know them people family, all of them criminals. All of them criminals, they, they, they prostitute, they drug, they drug addicts, and I'm not saying that boy is, but the apple don't fall too far from the tree. Because I know we know that family. See, that we do that in black American culture. So when we ask you, man, where you from? I hear I hear asking, where you from? We do that to our own people. So don't come up with they're being xenophobic. If that's the case, then we xenophobic to our own people then. Okay, you say I could pass for Nigeria or Ghana. Trust me, when I go, if I go anywhere, one, if I open my mouth, they know I'm not not them. Two, if you go over there long enough, we do look a little different as Black Americans. We do look different. If you look at us enough, we, we don't look, we don't look the same. Actually, I know the difference a lot of times when I see an African versus a Black American. We don't look the same. We really don't. We don't have the same features. It looks like we made, but we don't. We have the same features. So you say your, your sister's Nigerian in-laws won't let their kid listen to black American music. That's not going to stop them. They're going to be listening to probably the worst of it. They probably going to be listening to sexy red. They're not going to stop it. Them kids going to listen. Let me tell you something. What I know about kids, you could try all day to stop them from doing certain things. They're going to find a way to do it. So they could try They're going to be listening to sexy red. You watch. Indigo says without oppression, all they ha have left is themselves, which is why they won't go back to. Yeah, they do not want to go visit Europe. I, I, I pay attention to that. They'll go take cake and they want to be in, in places where someone has some sort of melanin to them. I noticed that they don't really prioritize going to European nations. Matter of fact, they can go to when y'all say white Latino, a true white Latino is, 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 is Argentinian. That's a true white Latino. They don't even be going down there to Argentina. Why is that? That's actually white Latinos. Straight up. They don't even want to go there. They want to be in the mix of somebody got some sort of melanin to them. And I'll be trying, but yeah, you want to discriminate. Like I said, well, I tell y'all can let me be a president of no nation. I don't care if you're Latin America, Caribbean, African, I, I have a rule. No discrimination here. And if you, if I, if, if we even hear you discriminating, you better not even breathe wrong. You getting deported. And if you break our law, you're going to jail. You're going to pay a hell of a fine. And then you're going to be deported. Don't come here. No discrimination. Don't act like your ancestors. See, that's what I would say. If I had to be the leader, but we know we, we had the super mayor as the leader. I don't know. She probably get them too. Cause she, she, she run their pockets. You know, super mayor, she, she going to get her, she going to get her coins. Yeah, but see, the problem is like like the other sister said that that you know some of them shucking and jiving with them too over there, like bro, like fifty years ago, you were serving them hand and foot. Like like Sister Juan Gale has showed me, I think I talked about this before, a documentary about a location in Kenya called Karen, 
and it's like this kind of up, upper elite place. Well, it's named after this white woman that basically had all that land and she had the Kenyans basically being servants for her. And of course, you know, now the Kenyan government had, and you know, all that, but people, some of the folks still stay in Karen. And I'm like, why don't y'all change the name of that? Why y'all keep calling it Karen? Man, the, the, bir the first thing I'm going to do, if I had to be a leader, every name they name something, I'm changing that doggone name. We're going to have an, uh, 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 if it's Kenya, we're going to name it K with Kenyan names. We could take the most famous Kenyans out there and reclassify those areas. If it's a lake, reclassify it. You're talking about Victoria Falls, man, forget a Victoria. We naming it to something else. We, we can find plenty of names in, in our languages or whatever to collect. That's the first thing y'all got to do is change those names. And, and this is, this is another hard conversation. Rodney say that's why them folks always have been able to have their way with the African continent because try BS and no code or, co or unification. Yeah. Yeah. You know, um, it's true. It's actually true. Because, you know, uh, um, I had a conversation uh, with, with one of the young ladies and uh, that worked with us about that same thing. And, you know, she was saying, I don't think we will ever get together like that. You know, like everybody see their tribe is just, you know, and they, and they look at each other different based on the tribe. And we like, what? But, but, but I, I explained to, to the sister, it said, yeah, but when them folks show up, they, they, they unified and they codified. I say a British and a German is going to get together. A Swedish person and a person from the Netherlands was Dutch. They're going to get together. A, a British and, 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 and an Irish, they're going to get together against us. And while y'all fighting about you, not my people, you, not my tribe, they all unifying as one to say, Hey, we are white and we got to protect white people against them. I say, that's why they, that's why you never get nowhere is because while you fighting and, and picking each other off, these people are moving into one unit and this is why they, they, uh, where they at. So beyond with you, if the diaspora would actually unify as a diaspora as one, it is nothing that them folks could do to us at that point. It's nothing the Asian could do, the Arab, uh, uh, anybody could do against us at that point. If we all just say, I'll be on with you, I'm going to say it. Get mad if you want. I know some of y'all feel like we arrogant sometimes. Okay, fine. Black America has the right way of thinking. Anybody that look at wherever they come from, when they look at you, they see a black person. If we all, doesn't mean you got to throw away your, your, your history, throw away your language, throw away your ethnicity. But what if for five years we say, you know what, we, throw, we, we won't identify as that, but we're going to all unify as black, no matter where we come from. We all black. And we're going to work together as one, as black people. Man, we are literally overturn everything they ever done negative to us within a five year span. But we're the problem. And when I say we, I'm talking about the diaspora. We're the problem. You so, you so concerned about your religion and you're so concerned about your doggone tribe. And I say this, if your religion and your tribe is so important in getting you somewhere, why are you at where you at today? Even in black America, we are, we are learning that black church is nothing but a thorn in the side of black America, nothing but a thorn. And that's why a lot of us have walked away from that black church. And when all our finances need to come out of that black church and put those same finances in the schools for our children, grocery stores that can give us some healthy food, hospitals that where our black women can, can have babies in peace and not, and not, and not die at childbirth like they do. Great doctors and nurses. So our people could, cause it is, you know, proven that our people live longer when they go to a black doctor. That's, that's proven. We need more doctors, nurses, hospitals, farmers, all of that than a freaking rapper. I'm sick of rappers. Everybody want to rap. We need more black plumbers, electricians. We need the architects, engineers. We need uh, uh, brothers that's, that's, that's into petroleum. 
chemical engineers. We need all those different things in the community. That's, that's called nation building. You can't nation build off of a freaking rapper or a stripper. You can't. I like, I like hip hop. Trust me, I do. But that's not nothing we can nation build on. Now, with that being said, um, I want to thank everybody on at least YouTube tonight for joining us on the live stream. Make sure that you um, click the subscribe button. That's very, very important. Click the like button and uh, share it with a friend. Definitely share it with a friend. Um, we'll be here, you know, I think tomorrow. Yeah, we'll be here tomorrow night and we, everything go right. We got a special guest. That'll be here tomorrow night, so make sure you, you be here 7 p.m. Central Standard Time. So those of you on YouTube, thank you for listening. If you're watching on the African Diaspora News Channel, I've got one more thing to show and review uh, for you because we couldn't do this on YouTube. But thank y'all, and we'll continue on.